Many moons ago at this point, the Buster Blader was the primary icon of our channel. We had video after video talking about different ways to play this card. And then eventually, in early 2023, it really sort of dried up. There wasn't a ton of different ways to play it. We occasionally came up with new ways and sort of innovated upon the strategy. But a lot of those types of playing it have been punished by banlist after banlist, with Chaos Rulers ban being the final nail in the coffin of our most up-to-date version. So... It's about time we bring him back, and we're bringing him back in two main ways. This is, first video is going to show us playing a branded Buster Blader deck, uh, inspired by the opponent we faced in our last video, uh, which was really well. We took his list. There was a couple of things I didn't really like about his list, so I did make a number of alterations, and I think this deck runs beautifully. It is very effective, and the most powerful thing about uh, Buster Blader strategies, and this goes back even way yonder in 2022 when i was first making videos about this deck god it's been that long and the primary sort of thing that uh makes a buster blader strategy good is not only how effectively the uh rest of the engine plays into summoning and setting up your primary combo but more importantly how does the rest of the deck aid and assist the buster lock because the buster lock is in 2024 not gonna cut it not by itself so we need to make sure it's backed up sufficiently in the past we've attempted using uh the likes of dp and a tiny engine we've attempted branded in the past as well we tried the chaos engine with the ruler and a various sort of uh, load of banishment cards and load of tuners and bestial spam all of those strategies have either been punished by the ban list or fallen out of favor because of new releases. And today we're going to be using the up-to-date, brand new, branded Buster Blader deck. So it's going to be a blast. I have a couple of replays I want to show off. Uh, a win and a loss. Just showing off some of the key aspects of the deck and what actually makes it tick. And we are going to hop in for a live game or two as well. So if you're interested in this as well as anything else, of course, that we post on this channel, including more Buster Blader content because these decks actually work really well and they were super fun. So I am almost certainly going to be making making more content on them in the future. We, of course, have a um, tons of content upcoming. I'm not sure when you're seeing this. By the time you're seeing this, new cards may already be out, uh, in which case we're probably already making content on those cards as we speak. So if you're interested in seeing content on all of that, make sure you're subscribed. Like this video to help us get it out to more people. I'm not going to ramble on here anymore at the beginning. Let's get into our first replay. You know, something in particular that I love about this deck is its incredible ability to play under Max C. And we're going to demonstrate that perfectly in this video. So they're going to start their turn with Better Luck Next Time. We're going to Ash that, of course. Better Luck Next Time is a very powerful card. They're going to go for Triple Tactics. Talon going to draw two from the deck here. A bit of a greedy play, but we'll see if it pays off. They're going to go for Captain Carry, grabbing Starter Engines from their deck. And they're going to set that card and pass to us. So not exactly a very impressive board, but I do want to show off the deck's ability to play through and around Max C. We're going to start of our buster well the best normal summon in the deck grabbing prologue of the destruction swordsman using fusion deployment now being met with an ash blossom now we have a ton of possibilities what we could do from this point but given the fact that we're under uh maxi what i normally do is i summon my cartesia and i pass right normally draw one good for you right they go for start your engines here we're actually going to change to start your engines fusing cartesia with the albaz that happens to be on our hand to summon out albion the sanctifier dragon so that is an incredible card only two draws off of our opponent's maxi you know what i can live with that all day every day they're going to summon out gold leon from their deck leon then going to synchro summon into gold pride star leon nice star leon uh can target our buster well but cannot destroy it because our life points are equal we're going to take out his star leon swing for 400 and we're simply going to pass the opponent now we're swinging for 400 damage uh the correct play probably not because it allows them to special summon his shit but we're gonna go for prologue of the destruction swordsman they're gonna hit us with another maxi resolving maxi twice in one game we're gonna chain to the maxi the destruction sword memories to fusion summon I'm going to banish materials from the graveyard, Albaz and Buster Blader here to go into Buster Blader, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman, using Prologue now to summon a deep Buster Dragon, changing all of our opponent's monsters to dragons, and negating the activated effects of all dragons. Sure enough, they're going to spam out a couple of monsters here. They're going to try Cerberus, because it's a Link monster. Sure enough, you've got absolutely nothing you can do to my board, and he realizes that very quickly and simply leaves. So we have the total Buster Lock there, very easily acquired, even under Max C, with Albion the Sanctifier Dragon, and backing us up with a quick play Cartesia on demand. And that is just an example of how the deck can play in such a treacherous metagame with so many powerful threats flying around like Max Seedrol, things like that, which is a huge part of deciding whether or not any deck, especially a rogue deck, is going to be in any way relevant or competitive in the metagame. Can it play around these big threats? And yes, we can. Replay number two. 
This replay, perhaps not quite as smooth as our first one. We're going to be playing the Branded Fusion here, sending Lebellion and Albaz to the graveyard. Going to go for Albion, the Branded Dragon here. Using Albion's effect, we're going to be met with infinite impermanence, a rather unfortunate turn of events that is going to somewhat hold us. However, we do still have plays. We have that Branded and White in hand. So we're going to tribute Albion from our field. We're going to activate, sorry, Special Summon, the Bestial Lebellion. We're going to play Regained onto our board. Branded and White now is going to banish two cards from our graveyard, summoning out Lebellion on the Searing Dragon. Now, we do have the option here, of course, of shuffling a card back off of Regain, but we decide not to do that because we want to use the Lebellion Fusion here to go into Mirror Jade, and we're going to set a card and end our turn. So there was a couple of different ways in which we hand could have handled that, but I think this was fairly reasonable. Then we're going to go for Fever Duster, wiping out the back row, which is annoying. I would have really liked to keep Regain, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Imperm as well. A second Imperm on our Mirror Jade. Going to go for Sign Up Manning. We're going to chain to that uh, Sign Up Manning the maxi but of, it, of course the last card in his hand is the call by the grave and from this point onwards we know the card he is now using is uh sign up manning grabbing the map next circular we know that from here it's going to be a bit of a one-sided duel so they're going to start their math mech combo they're going to start going crazy uh and basically very, very brief showcase of some of the branded lines and some of the things you can do with synergy there. Uh, a little bit unfortunate that our opponent literally had the perfect hand. Uh, so they're going to pop off a little bit here. Probably going to tune out this duel pretty quickly because we all know where it's going. Um, but yeah, so again, branded fusion still having its place, being able to go into the full power branded line as well. Even through some interruption, we were able to go into the mirror jade with a few back row options. So our opponent's going to go access code here off of the update jammer. Going to use their access code. They're going to start popping our cards, of course. Mirror jade goes first. Uh, then goes our Lebellion, and then goes our Lebellion, who would have seen that one coming. Uh, so they're going to wipe the board, swing it for 53, and swing it for 53 again. So, another showcase doesn't always go according to plan. I don't want to show off just wins, of course. Uh, so that's the two replays Adam uh, in mind. I wanted to show off some of the branded plays, as well as the Busted Blader plays. And now what we're going to do is we're going to hop into some live gameplay to see how the two interact in real time in the ranked ladder. Are we going to catch a bunch of L's? Are we going to win flat out? Who knows? Let's find out. All right, getting into our first live game here. Are we going to win the coin toss? We are. Love to see it. Uh, you know what? Master Duel might think I'm still playing Makonko. I was playing some Makonko earlier on today, and uh, we won a lot of coin tosses with, like, the worst deck for winning coin tosses. So I kind of figured they were going to cuck us when it comes to playing anything else, but it looks like we're just that guy. So this is a pretty awesome hand. Uh, we are playing against a 55 card deck. Very specific, but you know what? I like it. We're going to go for Buster Whelp of the Destruction Swordsman here. Uh, that is going to attempt to search our deck for Prologue. Hopefully it resolves. It might, it might not. We do get it to resolve. That is awesome. Uh, so this means we can officially play under things like Nib and stuff like that as well. Like they're not really too big of a problem for us. Now we're going to go for that Branded Fusion here. We're going to use the Branded Fusion, sending, of course, a... Uh, Light Monster and our Albaz to the graveyard. We're going to send a Fallen of Albaz as well as Lobelion here. Is that the way we want to do this? Do we have Dark? We have Mercurier. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's do that. Going to summon out Albion, the Branded Dragon. So we do miss out on some of the Link shenanigans when it comes to using the Branded version of the deck, but I honestly think that's a not a, <laughs> a hard payoff to make at all, considering how powerful the deck is. Going to go for Magnomet. That is very interesting. Targeting the Albaz... Now, we do have this. Can you use each effect once per turn? Hell yeah. Then I'm definitely going to negate that shit. 100% I'm negating that. Uh, we really want to keep that Albaz in our graveyard. That's what's going to keep our branded place alive. We need to be able to banish it, of course, to Fusion Summon. So having the Mercurial in hand, shutting down the Magnomet is pretty awesome. So we're going to now banish from the graveyard. We're going to banish Albaz and Mercurial. Mercurial is a hell of a card. Uh, it's a really nice card, actually, to have in our opening hand. That was that was that was quite nice. I like that. So we're gonna go for the Mercurial first, the Chain Link for a potential Ash, uh, and then we're gonna go for Lobelion. Not that I think he has Ash. I feel like if he had it, he would have used it on either Brand of Fusion or the Buster Whelp, of course. So I don't think he has Ash at all. But why why get in the bad habits, right? Uh, Lobelion then gonna Fusion Summon. We're gonna summon out the Mirror Jade quite. Clearly here, shuffling back Uno and Dos. Love to see it. We got that Mirror Jade on deck. Uh, we are fucking chilling, my guy. Uh, Mercurial then going to grab us a card from deck as well. So we have a whole bunch of options. Uh, we have from deck to hand. Man, we have so many options. We have Kit. We could summon Kit if we wanted to. 
Um, Kit's probably the way to go. Uh, I don't really have a card I want to shuffle back in that end of my deck, actually. Uh, you have to have the Fallen of Albaz, right? Yeah. I may honestly go for Albion. I'm gonna go for Albion, yeah. Uh, I feel like Kit would have been nice, but both of the cards in my hand I kind of really like, so I don't want to do that. <laughs> We're going to tribute off Albion, the Branded Dragon, summon Lobelion, the Bestial whatever, or the Bestial Lobelion, sorry. We're going to use the Bestial Lobelion here, perfection. Going to grab ourselves, ooh, we could do Branded Lost, hello? Maybe we do Branded Lost, actually. No, let's do Regent. Regent's too much value to pass up, man. It's just too much value. We're going to go for Albion, the Shredder Dragon here. we got a few options. I think sending opening here is going to be big because it can protect our like Destruction Swordsman and such during our opponent's turn, which is going to be fucking huge. Uh, I don't think we need to send Retribution yet, so I am going to send opening, yeah. Just for that Destruction Protection, that is absolutely massive. And we Mulligan for one, get another Maxi, that's kind of neat. Uh, we're going to play a card face down. And from here, we are fucking Gucci, man. We're going to go for the Albion during the end phase. Setting up another branded card, which is awesome. Uh, we're going to play... I think we're probably going to play Retribution here. Yeah, Retribution for sure. Absolutely. Because then that puts it in our graveyard for turn three as well, which is awesome. So we got a negate here too. Pff, man, this shit's sick. Hell yeah. Uh, so we are going to activate the Maxi. So we are. See if we can beat out that Bestial. Yes, we can. Of course we can. Absolutely. Uh, so we are now going to go for the Prologue. Absolutely. Talk about getting outplayed. Talk about getting outplayed. I'm uh, going to send these two dorks to the grave. We're going to now be able to fusion summon, which is awesome. We're going to activate the memories. Damn, that might get played like a fucking fiddle. <laughs> Excellent. So now we're going to go Destruction Sword Memories. We're going to Fusion Summon using the targeted Albion as well as our Buster Blader. We're going to Fusion Summon into the Buster Blader, the Dragon Destroyer Swordsman. That means he can no longer even activate the effect of his Bestials in hand. And then this is also going to bring out a Buster Dragon, changing all monsters on his field to Dragon types. Dragon monsters cannot activate their effects. Dragon monsters in his possession. That means Graveyard in hand as well, which is big. That means no Albion the Shrouded Dragon. That means no, no bullshit, anything like that. We are 100% in the clear here. Um, equipping Yuan doesn't do a damn thing. <laughs> There's the scoop! Yes, sir! Full combo! Get the fuck out of here! That is a fantastic demonstration of what exactly this deck can do. Did we have a good opening hand? Maybe. I don't know. But it seemed like it worked out in our favor. So let's get into the next game. Alrighty. It's gonna be hard to follow such an amazing performance in that particular game, but we're gonna have to try our best. Wing another coin toss. Konami is feeling generous today. Let's see if that sticks for out, though. Uh, we're just going to have to wait and see. Damn, that was fucking fire, man. But that's what the deck does, you know what I mean? That's just what the deck does. This hand, maybe not so hot. Um, <laughs> we drew both our continuous spells? That's kind of cringe. I'm not going to lie. Um, right, 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 right. We're going to have to... Going to have to really play on this Albion here. We're going to activate Albion the Shroud of Dragon. Okay, 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 okay. Honestly, I'm going to send, I'm going to send Retribution. Fuck it. I simply believe that we're going to top deck into the right card. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, doesn't Quim send Brand Fusion? question mark? Oh, of course it does. Of course it does. We're just that guy. We're just that guy. What do you want from me? What a fucking top deck. Going to activate Retribution in the Grave. You're going to grab back the Branded Fusion from the Grave. And we're going to get popping. Let's fucking do this. Activate the Branded Fusion. Damn, we're just fucking better at the game, apparently. <laughs> Love to see it. Uh, if I send for Albion, I'm not going to be able to go into Lobelion separately, which is kind of a bummer. Kind of a bummer. Um, I could send for Lobelion, I guess. Then I'm not going to have an Albaz to go into Mirror Jade, which also kind of sucks. Not going to lie. Let's go for Albion the Branded Dragon to begin with. 
if it works out, great. If it doesn't, I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Uh, we are going to send the... Oh, damn it. We are going to have to do some fuck shit here. I'm not going to lie. Uh, let's send Cartesia and let's send Albaz. So there's a reason behind that. So realistically, we're going to have to banish the Albion as well as the Albaz to go into a... Do you even do Lavellion here? Probably not, because we're having to banish this guy anyway. We'll probably just go straight in the Mirror Jade, because I don't want to discard either of these two cards, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I really don't want to do that. Uh, so we're going to activate Branded Lost. Uh, no, we activate Albion first. Then we're going to go Quim. Then we're going to go Branded Lost. Uh, he can't respond to me anyway, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so it's not as if like he can respond to anything that we're currently activating. I guess we could have... Oh, we could have lost Search for Mercury. Oh, we can still do that, can't we? Lost Search for Mercury, then Fuse Albaz and Mercury. Yeah, it's Lobelion is the one that discards for cost, actually. Yeah, okay, that works. That kind of works. Although I, st I really still don't want to discard either of you. Uh, I might honestly just go straight in the Mirror Jade. Let's go Lavellion. Fuck it. Let's go Lavellion. Let's fuse these two. Let's just do it. Fuck it. Into Lavellion. Uh, we have our reasons. We have our reasons. Uh, so now we can... We can do a few things. We're going to activate Lavellion Chain Link 1, of course. Uh, we do have to discard a card. We're going to discard the Ash. Sucks, I know, but deal with it. Uh, now we can Mercurier to search. And we can brand it Regain to draw, which is also really nice. So we're going to shuffle back Mercurier, which is great. Then we're going to go Cartesia right here. Chain like four, man. This deck's nuts. This deck's nuts! So we're going to fuse into Granguinol. We're going to fuse Uno and Dose. Probably Albion, actually, we want to fuse. Yeah, because, yeah, that's fine. We want to fuse Albion away. Uh, into Grand Gwinnall. Gonna put him up here. We're not using any Link monsters, so we don't need to care about the extra monster zone. So it's it's fine. Ooh, cross out. Nice card. Nice card. Uh, probably one I'm gonna shuffle back, though, for a potential Spring Guns kit target. So now we're gonna Fusion Summon using Uno and Dose. There we go. One and two. And we got Mirror Jet on deck. Perfect. Perfect. Grand Gwinnall, gonna get milling. Oh, my brother in Christ, we have so much advantage. It is actually unreal. We can send we can send anything we fucking want, buddy. We can send anything we want to the graveyard. We're gonna send a there's no point in sending the Titanic Lad if we got Albion. Um Send Rimbrum, I guess? Yeah, let's send Rimbrum. Fuck it. Now we're gonna go for Spring Gans kit. We're gonna special summon it out to the field. Good stuff. Its effect then will activate. We're going to grab a branded card from deck to hand, and we're going to shuffle a card back from our hand into the deck. Uh, I think we're probably going to grab not branded and high spirits, branded opening potentially. I don't really want to discard anything. Maybe you. Retribution, actually. Oh, hella retribution. Yeah. Hell yeah. Grab Retribution back, we shuffle back the cross out, then we got that negate, and we can use this for a cycle effect again next turn. Hell yeah! In what fucking world do we not do that? Oh my god. Yeah, everything about this is just awesome. What the hell? So we're gonna use this, we're gonna set a... We'll set Branded Opening. It's fine. We'll set it. It may be useful during their turn, because we do have Maxi, so we may draw some discard fodder. Uh, I am not going to activate Cartesia because I want it to be in the graveyard for a Quim summon. And yeah, we're fucking golden. Do I have Dragostopelia in this deck? I don't. I should. I should include Dragostopelia. Just to make the Cartesia just a little bit more useful. I swear to God, don't you fucking dare. Don't you do this to me. Don't do this to me. Don't do this to me. I'm upset. I'm upset. I'm very upset. Mm-hmm. Yep. Sure thing, buddy. I'm... Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. 
Mm hmm. We are going to cheer Maxi to that. Uh, you're going to grab Trap Trick, uh, Trap Trip Garden, not Trap Tricks Garden. Of course, he has Ash. Uh, that's fine. Uh, it is what it is. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Uh, if I just like get rid of this guy, dude, is there a like, way that this goes wrong for me? Probably not, right? Yeah, I'll just get rid of it. Fuck it. Uh, they seem pretty reliant upon their normal summon. Uh, I think we're just going to get rid of that. So we're going to banish you. Uh, does Trap Trip Garden do stuff? Uh, I pushed the weight. Does it give him an extra normal summon by any chance? It might. It might, actually. Yeah. See, that's not good. See, I, sh I should have saved that. I should have saved that for a Sura. Would it have mattered? Maybe. Probably not. Add a whole normal trap from deck to hand. Oh, bravo. You, this, guy, this guy searches. That's fine. Um, he goes Sura. Most of the whole trap cards only do shit when I summon. So if he goes Sura... As long as he doesn't go Holyusha here, then I should pretty much be able to just swing into Sura and deal with it before anything bad happens? Question mark? I don't know. I don't often see uh, trap tricks on the ladder, so I'm not like totally sure if I should be doing anything special to deal with it. Yeah, Flunky Trap Hole doesn't do anything if I don't summon anything. So unless he already has Holyusha in hand, he must have like the best. If he had Holyusha in hand, it would be the best Trap Tricks hand of all time. It would be simply the best. Like, there would be absolutely no way it'd be better. Other than short of having like Parallel Exceed, there would be 0% chance of him having a better hand in any other set of circumstances. Sarah so set one. I'm very confident now. Uh, I honestly, I think we're okay. We can make this work. Uh, unfortunate turn of events, but you know what? We can make this work. I'm not going to set that to the field. I'm definitely adding that to my hand. Then Cartesia is definitely coming back to my hand. Right, so we just recoup two cards, which is great. We're going to draw number one for turn, so we got three cards. He does have Flukia Trap Hole. Um, which is annoying, but we are going to be playing the long game here. So I am just going to take out Sara. Oh, shit! I forgot that happens! Hmm. So the question is, right? This is the question. As long as I don't... I'm just gonna chill. I'm just gonna chill. I've still got... I've got my mirror shield is live again this turn. I feel like if I just kind of chill... It should be mostly fine, right? That's fine. So you normal summon diarrhea. Uh, target a Trap Tricks monster in your graveyard, target... Oh, okay, summon it in defense. That's kind of annoying. Uh, not the biggest deal in the world, but it's fine. He would have popped a back row if we had any, but that's we don't have any, so that's fine. Oh, that triggers your dumbass, though, man! Okay. Um, Sara... Grabs Holyusha. Yep, uh-huh. Of course. So, um, when does this deck do stuff? You know what I mean? All right. That is stuff. Are we being serious right now? That's what we're calling stuff. That's so cringe. Oh my God. That's just, that's so cringe. Um, that's just cringe. I can't believe you just did that to me. Uh, sure. All right. Sure thing, buddy. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to play your game. Let's play your game. Fuck it. Let's play your game. Let's see how your game works, sir. Have at thee. Does your game involve playing cards? Because you can nod. You can just pass it back to me. You know, I don't mind taking it slow. Again, you're you're a, you're a pretty slow deck. I, I don't mind I don't mind I don't mind taking it slow. You know, I'll play at your speed, and I'll win. I'll win at your speed. Trust. 
I really didn't see Baguska coming. I really didn't. I really was convinced he was going to go Rafflesia. I thought he was going to go Pingulka. Anything else. I just was not honestly expecting Baguska. And I should have. In hindsight, it was, it was the most optimal play. It makes sense. I just thought that my opponent had more respect for himself. But then again, he's playing Trap Tricks. So that's on me, I guess. I should, yeah, I shouldn't have had such high expectations, apparently. Um, I only have a couple of triggers left for you. I'm not going to waste them. Yeah, uh, buddy, I'm I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Oh, brother. Okay, uh, we, I am going to meet that with Maxi, though. So how... How does he get over us? You know what I mean? Like, what is the plan? I know the, the Link 3 can maybe boost itself high enough? Possibly? Sorry, gonna set a trap hole. If he sets Grave Diggers, I'm gonna be upset. Um... But uh, if he takes us out in battle, then it doesn't matter because he won't be able to use that card in damage step, I'm pretty sure. Or damage calculation? Is that the name of it? I always get the, the names of the steps mixed up. Um, what's the name of the step immediately after the battle? It's damage calculation, right? Or is that, is that immediately before? Or is it damage step? I think damage step is the one I'm talking about, where it's like right after the battle is done and damage calculation has been completed. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure it's damage step. It is. Um, so in damage step, he won't be able to activate Grave Diggers. So if he swings, if he goes into the Link 3 and swings in and takes me out, he won't be able to negate my Mirage yet. Which is big, because then I'll just wipe the fuck out of his board. And if he doesn't have a board, then I'm not worried about his whole, uh, his trap holes. So that is a lot more freedom. Gloomy. Yeah, sure. Gloomy gets to bring back the, um, the Maxi. It sure does. It does get to do that, if you weren't sure. It does. You gonna go access code here? No shot, right? No shot you're going access code. That'd be pretty funny, but um, no way, right? <laughs> Sarah, yep, Sarah is coming back. That is unfortunate. Baguska plus access code. What a fucking combo, man. What a McFucking combo. She got more than enough gas for it here. You've got more than enough gas for an access code here, but do you play it? Do you play it, is my question. I actually kind of want to play some Trap Tricks, low-key. Uh, Trap Tricks is kind of fun. <laughs> it really is. I actually kind of like it, so I may play. I may, I may play a little bit of Trap Tricks. He's going into the Link 3, I knew it. Right, so this one not boost up to 28, right? And that's okay. If you switch Baguska to attack mode, I am banishing you so fast. Like, I am going to eradicate you if you switch Baguska to attack mode. You you better be fucking careful, buddy. Uh, Alright, Pudisha is negated. That's fine. Trap tricks. Fucking Sarah still gets triggered. That's fine. You think this is a fucking middle-aged white woman with how often she gets triggered? God damn it, man. Uh, Trap tricks. Uh, most of it was special from this turn to get activated its effect. Okay, that's fine. Oh, shit. What? Oh, wait. Oh, don't I have a opening in Grieve? Question mark? I do not. Fuck. Fuck. Nah, he can use Grave Diggers. God fucking damn it. Oh, maybe I should have just not activated then. <laughs> oh, like a fucking idiot. <laughs> uh, 28, 18. Is that lethal, Baguska? 38, 46, 66. Yeah, that's lethal, Baguska. Do you switch that shit to attack mode? And, and you got it, Chief. Is he going to do it, though? Does he realize? Okay, he does. All right. Go ahead, buddy. Take your swings. I'm ready for him. I am ready for your attack, sir. 
by all means. Rubber, he's still comboing. He's still comboing. Alamiris. Uh, Alamiris, sir, you are not negated because Baguska is not an attack mode. That's 3200 attack. That's a big plant. That bitch means business. God damn. All right, buddy. I get it. I'm trying to be nice and giving you your lethal here. I'm trying to be nice. You're making it very hard. You didn't fuck up your lethal, did you? I just think you still got it, right? Yeah, of course he fucking has it. He's got so much damage on board. He's got like 8,000 damage. Yeah, 8,600. What the fuck am I talking about? You like swing? I gotta count to five. If he doesn't go to battle phase, uh, five. Yeah, I counted. Count it real quickly, though. You didn't hear me. Alright, he got to be end a little bit, uh, which was a bit of a pain in the ass. But you know what? We had a really powerful turn one from a really rough starting hand, so it's hard to be upset. Uh, let's bring up the deck profile. And here you have it. This is the deck. So we're running a pretty standard Buster Builder line. Uh, again, fairly similar to what we were running in the past. The Triple Whelp and the one Dragon Buster Destruction Sword as alongside the two OG Buster Blader. And the reason we're playing the original Buster Blader is it's summonable off of fusion deployment, which means that in some niche situations, you can actually manually fusion summon your Buster Blader, which is pretty fucking cool. Uh, it doesn't come up a lot. Uh, I am kind of tempted to bump fusion deployment up, though. This card is really good, primarily because of its synergy with Cartesia. Cartesia is a fantastic card in this deck, so maybe. But anyways, on topic. Free Whelp. One Buster, uh, two Buster Bladers, the originals, and then we've got the two Destruction Sword Memories and two, uh, three copies, sorry, of Prologue of the Destruction Swordsman. Other than that, it is a fairly standard um, branded list. Triple Maxi, Triple Ash Blossom, Double uh, Fallen of Albaz, Double Alibur, the Jester of Despia, Single Mercurier, uh, one Springen's Kit, one Cartesia, one Quem. We got the uh, one of the... McNomet, Saranir, and Drissorm. Saranir will soon be limited to one, so I only ever play one of it in my decks anymore. I try to play as like up-to-date as I can. Uh, we've got Albion, the Shredder Dragon, the one of Lebelion. One of Lebelion's totally fine in this deck. You don't need more than one of it. You can if you want to see Bestials more often, but these guys like aren't the greatest to have in hand. But then again, having a free Dragon in Grave is also useful, so if you want to bump this guy up, I wouldn't blame you. But just know, not, man not mandatory. Uh, one fusion deployment, one branded in white, one branded fusion, one branded lost, one branded regain, lot of one ofs. We got the double call by the grave, single cross out designator, double branded opening, one branded in high spirits, very cuttable card. This card was pretty mid, I'm going to be honest. Uh, it is decent enough because you're playing a lot of dragons, but it's a, uh, it ain't, it, it, it ain't a lot, I'm going to be honest. And then our branded retribution. And our extra deck is rather simplified. I think this is where the most work can be done, I think, to improve the deck. We got the double Buster Blader, uh, one Titanic Clad, double Albion, double Mirajid, one Lebelion, uh, one Alba Lenatus, which has actually come up. Uh, cart the Granguinol, we got the one Rinbrum, one Albion, the Sanctifier Dragon, double Buster Dragon, and one Bestial Dispatter, which has yet to come up, but seems really cool in theory. Now, the reason I'm saying this part can be worked on is realistically the only reason we're running two copies of the Buster Blader as well as the Buster, well, the Buster Dragon we kind of need multiple of, but the Buster Blader, the main reason we're running two of it is it's actually a valid target for Branded and High Spirits. So if you have like a Buster Blader in hand, you can technically discard the Buster Blader by revealing, by sending one of these guys to the graveyard to grab yourselves a Alibur, to grab, sorry, to grab yourselves like Cartesia or Kit or something like that. So the Branded and High Spirits is pretty good. If you don't want to play Branded and High Spirits, though, you can probably cut this guy down to one. It's really not all that great. Uh, he is a phenomenal card, but you will never summon more than one of him in, in a duel. I don't think. And uh, in terms of the rest of the deck, what you would probably want to make room for is Dragostopelia. Uh, I think Dragostopelia is basically mid-range enough to where it fulfills all of your generic fusion conditions. So in most circumstances, one of the hardest things for you to do is find a generic fusion uh, in certain situations. And I think Dragstopelia is one of the better ones. And you can simply drop the Dispeter for it. Dispeter is cool, but you're most of the time you're fusion locked, so it's not the greatest. Uh, so I think dropping Dispeter for the Dragstopelia will put you in situations where where you would have had a dead combo. You can now actually summon a Dragstopelia and, and actually have plays. So I think that is worth noting. Other than that, I think the deck was pretty spot on. Uh, if anyone has any suggestions, any ideas, anything they want to add to the deck, you can, of course, leave them in the comments below or hop into the Discord and leave your suggestions directly there. 
But yeah, that's pretty much everything I have to say. Make sure you're subscribed if you got this far. Like this video if you actually enjoyed watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.